Solids Solar Hydrogen Technology represents one of the most intriguing shifts happening in the clean energy landscape. It is a completely different approach to producing green hydrogen, one that does not rely on traditional grid-based electricity, large electrolyzers, or heavy water consumption. Instead, it attempts to collapse the entire hydrogen production process into something that behaves more like a solar panel. At first glance, a Solhide module looks familiar. It has the shape and general appearance of a solar photovoltaic panel. Yet inside, it contains a miniature factory for producing hydrogen from moisture in the air. In this video, we will dive deeply into how this technology works, why it matters, and what it could mean for the future of green hydrogen production globally. To understand Solhide, you have to forget the idea that hydrogen must always come from a conventional electrolyzer, powered by PV or wind. The traditional model requires high-purity water, a high-voltage electrical supply, DC-AC power conditioning equipment, compression hardware, balance of plant systems, and the supporting infrastructure that surrounds it. Solhide flips this assumption. Instead of treating hydrogen as something that must be produced in industrial plants, they envision hydrogen production as something modular, distributed, and embedded into the solar surface itself. Their concept is built around the idea that hydrogen can be produced directly at the panel level using sunlight and water vapor. No pumps, no water tanks, no external stacks. Just a sealed device that passively absorbs moisture from the environment and uses the photovoltaic energy generated on its own surface to power electrolysis inside the panel. At the front of a Solhide module are standard solar photovoltaic cells. These cells convert sunlight into direct current electricity, just like any conventional solar panel. But rather than sending that electricity through cables, inverters, and distribution lines to power an electrolyzer located elsewhere, the Solhide module channels the DC electricity directly into the electrolytic component embedded inside the panel. This internal component is a specially designed low-voltage electrolyzer that has been engineered to operate efficiently using the exact power characteristics that PV cells naturally produce. This direct coupling eliminates conversion losses that would usually occur when power is conditioned for grid use. There is no inverter required, no step-up or step-down transformer, no high-voltage components. The electricity simply flows straight into the electrochemical reaction system where water molecules are split into hydrogen and oxygen. But where does the water come from? This is one of the most revolutionary aspects of the Solhide design. Instead of using liquid water pumped from a reservoir, the module collects moisture directly from the air. Behind the PV cells, the panel contains layers of hygroscopic material, substances that naturally absorb water vapor. Think of them as highly efficient sponges that attract moisture molecules at the microscopic level. When air moves through the back of the panel, this material captures humidity and feeds it into the electrolyzer. The system does not need high humidity to work. Moderate humidity levels, such as those commonly found throughout Europe, are sufficient. Solhide designed the sorption layer to operate effectively in humidity ranges that mirror real-world conditions, rather than requiring tropical moisture levels. This allows their technology to function in places that are not traditionally ideal for atmospheric water harvesting. Once the moisture is captured, it is converted to a thin film of liquid water that moves into the electrolysis chamber. Inside the chamber, electrodes coated with catalytic materials initiate the electrochemical reaction. When the absorbed water molecules contact the electrodes and the PV electricity flows into the electrolyzer, the reaction splits the water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The oxygen is typically released back into the air through vents that allow safe dispersion without creating pressure buildup. The hydrogen, however, is collected through a selective membrane system that channels the gas into a hydrogen manifold at the back of the panel. Individual modules connect into a shared pipeline, allowing the hydrogen to be collected and sent to storage, compression, or further processing. This modular design is one of the most attractive elements of Solhide's approach. Instead of building a large centralized electrolyzer plant, developers simply deploy additional Solhide panels to increase hydrogen output. It's similar to how solar farms scale. A project developer chooses how many kilowatts or megawatts of hydrogen production they want. 
and they install the corresponding number of panels. This scaling flexibility allows small-scale distributed systems for farms, industrial sites, or mobility hubs, as well as larger solar hydrogen parks that behave like traditional solar farms, but produce hydrogen instead of or alongside electricity. Another aspect that makes Solhide unique is the way they integrate low-voltage electrolysis directly with photovoltaics. Traditional electrolyzers require specific voltage thresholds, often in the tens of volts, supplied by power electronics. Solhide engineered their electrolyzer to work efficiently at the naturally low voltage of PV cells. This eliminates a large part of the balance of plant cost associated with conventional hydrogen systems. There is no need for rectifiers, converters, or harmonization equipment. The electrolyzer runs purely on the direct DC output from the panel. This also means the system avoids electrical losses associated with AC-DC conversion, which can reduce the overall efficiency of grid-powered electrolyzers by 5% to 15% depending on the system. All of this comes together to form a lightweight, sealed, and self-contained hydrogen factory. It can be mounted anywhere a solar panel can be installed on rooftops, on agricultural land, in deserts, next to industrial facilities, or in remote locations where water and electricity infrastructure are limited. The system doesn't need connection to the grid, and it doesn't need access to a pressurized water source. For off-grid regions, this is a breakthrough. In areas with weak infrastructure or limited access to clean water, Solhide panels could introduce a viable way to produce hydrogen locally without costly infrastructure upgrades. A Solhide module produces roughly a few hundred liters of hydrogen per day, depending on sunlight and humidity levels. While this may sound small compared to megawatt-scale electrolyzers, the advantage lies in scalability. If a developer installs 10,000 panels, the hydrogen production scales linearly. And because these panels also behave like photovoltaics, developers can choose whether to harvest electricity, hydrogen, or a mix of both depending on configuration. In the future, projects could be optimized for dual output solar farms where some panels produce electricity while others produce hydrogen, all feeding into a combined energy system. Durability is another important dimension. Electrolyzers typically require cooling systems, pumps, and maintenance-heavy components. Solhide's approach, however, minimizes mechanical parts. The moisture-absorbing layer is passive, the electrolyzer is compact and engineered for stability. The panel housing is sealed against dust and contaminants. This reduces the maintenance burden and increases reliability in challenging environments. This also makes the technology suitable for regions where regular technical service is not feasible, adding to its global applicability. There are, however, challenges and limitations. For one, hydrogen production per square meter is lower than centralized systems. A conventional electrolyzer coupled to a utility-scale solar farm will produce significantly more hydrogen per acre. But Solhide's counter-argument is that simplicity, modularity, decentralization, and low infrastructure burden offset this. Another limitation is humidity dependence. Hydrogen output fluctuates with moisture availability. Desert regions with extremely low humidity, or very cold, dry climates, may require additional design adaptation. That said, the demonstration projects in Belgium indicate the system works effectively in temperate climates, with humidity levels far from tropical. One of Solhide's strengths is their roadmap. They plan to scale from early pilot systems to larger parks that integrate 2 megawatts of solar power with tens of kilowatts of hydrogen production. Early demonstrations show how their modules can be paired with energy storage, compressors, and small-scale distribution systems forming a complete solar-to-hydrogen ecosystem. The first solar hydrogen park under development aims to showcase how this technology can be deployed at a meaningful scale. If successful, it may define a new category of hybrid solar farms where hydrogen is produced at the surface level instead of in centralized facilities. The economic implications are equally important. Solhide panels remove several cost categories entirely. Without inverters, water purification systems, pipelines, cooling equipment, and high-voltage gear, the initial capital expenditure is significantly reduced. Operating costs are also lower because the system doesn't require pumping or water procurement. The absence of complex electrical equipment means fewer maintenance needs and lower failure points. 
These economic advantages could make Solhide viable in markets where conventional electrolyzer systems struggle to compete due to water scarcity or high infrastructure costs. For hydrogen project developers, consultants, and investors, Solhide introduces a new variable in financial modeling. Traditional hydrogen modeling revolves around CAPEX for electrolyzers, balance of plant, water treatment, grid interconnection, and solar or wind energy supply. Solhide collapses many of these categories into a single asset class. One panel equals one unit of hydrogen production capability, powered by its own internal electricity. Modeling becomes more modular and potentially more predictable at smaller scales. This is particularly relevant for your hydrogen cost crusher content and your starter kit framework, because Solhide-like technologies change how developers estimate LCOH, site selection criteria, permitting pathways and balance of plant cost assumptions. From an environmental perspective, the technology presents clear benefits. The water requirement is minimal compared to conventional electrolyzers. While water is technically drawn from humidity, the volume is so small relative to industrial systems that its impact is negligible. The system also avoids the ecological burden of water treatment chemicals, and wastewater streams that typically accompany electrolyzer operations. Its distributed nature reduces the need for long hydrogen pipelines and associated losses. And because each panel is sealed and operates silently, it introduces minimal disturbance to land use, making it suitable for agricultural integration or co-location with existing solar projects. Looking ahead, the significance of Solhide lies not only in its current performance, but in the evolution of distributed hydrogen technologies, if solar hydrogen panels continue to improve in efficiency, durability, and cost, they may form the backbone of micro-hydrogen grids, local hydrogen mobility hubs, community hydrogen farms, and industrial hydrogen clusters with minimal infrastructure overhead. They may also complement large-scale hydrogen production, filling in niche roles where conventional electrolyzers are not feasible. For developing countries, rural communities, or island nations, this technology could unlock hydrogen production capabilities without the need for expensive infrastructure upgrades. And as this transformation unfolds, developers, consultants, and investors are going to need smarter ways to analyze projects, validate assumptions, and reduce risk. That is exactly where h2hub.reneenergy.com becomes invaluable. If you are building, planning, or evaluating a green hydrogen project, whether it involves Solhide-style distributed production or conventional electrolyzers, you can access the Hydrogen Project Starter Kit, financial model templates, feasibility tools, permitting roadmaps, and step-by-step -step development guidance built specifically for professionals in this industry. These tools help you plan, price, and execute your project with more clarity and confidence. So if you are serious about succeeding in the green hydrogen space, Visit h2hub.reneenergy.com and start using the same frameworks trusted by developers aiming to build profitable hydrogen projects in today's rapidly evolving energy landscape.